Hamilton's fierce threat at Mercedes Hamilton wasn't satisfied with the P4 finish at the Hungarian Grand Prix, and it was to be expected, considering he started P1 and had a great qualifying session, beating Verstappen himself, which was a rare and refreshing sight to see this season. Despite all of that, he still had some statements pointed towards the team, more or less based around a familiar fact because of which he branded himself a broken record. What does this show about the Silver Arrows, and could a larger problem be present here? was unfortunately overshadowed by his regrettable performance in Sunday's race. Overcoming Max Verstappen in a swift lap is indeed a notable accomplishment, particularly in this challenging season for everyone not named Red Bull. But does his qualifying performance indicate a trend of excelling in Q3 for pole position, yet struggling during the races? It's clear that he usually manages to pull through when it truly matters, and there are instances in qualifying where Hamilton falls short, yet more often than not, he successfully meets the challenge head-on when the pressure rises in Q3. Regrettably, for the past 18 months, Hamilton's car hasn't been the most reliable to secure a pole position, even when he does deliver a stellar performance. Despite these obstacles, he still managed to snatch the pole on this occasion. However, a critical factor to consider is his proficiency on this circuit, as he has a certain fondness for the Hungara ring and has proven himself capable of pulling off impressive feats here. In his post-qualifying conversation, Hamilton detailed his approach to the lap, highlighting his willingness to push the W14 to its its limits. This attracted the attention of several team principals, who noted his aggressive driving style and readiness to take calculated risks. Such extreme commitment might not be frequently observed, which could explain why the seven-time world champion's efforts in Q3 often get overlooked when they don't result in a solid race position. After the race, he openly admitted that his performance in Formula One has been below his personal standards for over a year, a confession prompted by his fourth-place finish at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Even as a seven-time champion, he faced challenges in the early stages of the race due to the W14's imbalanced state. Although the car's performance did gradually improve as the race unfolded, Hamilton missed beating Sergio Perez to the podium by a mere 1.5 seconds. I haven't been at my best for over a year, Hamilton told media, including Racing News 365, after a sixth top four result of the season. I felt like qualifying was me getting back in the game, and we may have been able to finish third with a better start. Max just got a better start than me, and I got a bit of wheel spin and was a bit compromised after that. We were just too slow in the first two stints, the balance was not good and the car was just slow. But then the balance picked up a lot at the end, and all of a sudden I was able to apply the pressure on Perez, but it was too late. Hamilton's poor performance during the race starkly contrasted with Russell's weekend, who managed to secure a P6 finish despite a disastrous Saturday, reminiscent of Perez struggling to advance beyond Q1. This disparity in performance places Mercedes in a somewhat mediocre position on the grid. When the performances of the two drivers contrast to such an extent, it suggests that the problem may not not lie solely with them. Hamilton in a way echoed this sentiment, revealing that he has urged Mercedes to concentrate their development efforts on the car's floor area, much like Red Bull's approach. We generally have a bigger wing than some of the others, like the Red Bulls, for example, but they seem to have more downforce from their floor, he said. We have a lot of work to do. I am like a broken record. I've just got to keep telling the guys we need to go in that direction. I would like to see that either with this year's car or next year. Look, if we are being honest, moving in the direction of Red Bull is a logical step, and it doesn't inherently imply imitation, which is inherently impossible. It's feasible to incorporate the same conceptual framework while simultaneously injecting unique ideas into the mix. Given Mercedes, Ferrari, and McLaren's unsuccessful approaches, the Red Bull method stands as an effective path. The notable accomplishments of Aston Martin and McLaren, both of whom have adopted the Red Bull's approach, provide further validation. By this point, any reluctance to consider a similar strategy could be construed as stubbornness. Wolf, adding weight to Hamilton's statements, confirmed this direction to the disappointment of many fans. He acknowledged the unpredictability of the W14, even though Lewis had achieved pole position. Clearly, we have a package today that was competitive, and Lewis just drove an amazing lap and put it on pole. I think that's something we can be really proud of, Wolf said after qualifying. The biggest weakness we have in the car is not a lack of downforce, it is that the car is unpredictable. The drivers never 
have the confidence to really push it hard in qualifying, and I think the car they had today was something that gave confidence and allowed them to push without thinking that it could step out on the entrance or exit of the corner. I think this is the main area we need to work on, giving them a car balance that is more predictable. What is the solution now? Is the near future bleak for Mercedes? The Silver Arrows must first tackle the inconsistency of their vehicle, an issue that seems to be obstructing Mercedes from extracting the maximum potential of their car. Team principal Toto Wolf has noted that the new ground effect cars are generally erratic, yet the Red Bull and McLaren cars seem to buck the trend, maintaining stable performance across various tracks. Mercedes further explained that after the bad start of the race, it was about trying to fight back while while also keeping an eye on Perez moving through the field, and an even more important issue, overheating. The brakes and power unit on both cars were impacted by this, the temperatures on Sunday being by far the warmest of the whole weekend. To counteract some of these issues, both drivers had to employ a decent amount of lift and coast throughout the race. Lewis also struggled with car balance and understeer, through to snap oversteer in the first stint. This enabled the McLarens to eke out an advantage. This is why they need to really sort out their overheating issues, because it happened in 2022 in Spain as well, where both Hamilton and Russell were told constantly to lift and coast on the radio. Interestingly enough, however, them being so marginally on cooling was probably also the reason Hamilton took pole position. The aerodynamic advantage of their cooling approach gave them some time in qualifying where the short runs make overheating less of an issue. The downside is it hampered them in the race quite a bit, as this is also something we have seen before, like in Spain last year, in Monza 2020, or several times in Austria. Although Mercedes has upgrades slated for races both before and after the summer break, they don't anticipate an immediate, substantial boost in performance. Hamilton voiced caution when discussing potential enhancements. Unlocking the necessary downforce to close the gap with Red Bull presents a complex puzzle for Mercedes. As Hamilton explained, refining intricate airflows and aerodynamics is a process that demands time and comprehension. The new regulations and tools designed to understand the airflow beneath the car only compound the complexity. In modern Formula One cars, aerodynamics plays a pivotal role and informs every decision the team makes, whether it relates to upgrades or minor adjustments. Yet Andrew Shovlin, the team's trackside engineering director, remarked that the new cost cap rules combined with the complex aerodynamics are making it harder for Mercedes to catch up with Red Bull. Hamilton, a seven-time champion with an impressive record of 103 career wins, hasn't added to this tally since the 2021 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, primarily due to the lack of genuine opportunities to do so. Following the 2021 season, Mercedes has celebrated just one victory at the 2022 Sao Paulo GP when George Russell triumphed, with Hamilton securing a 1-2 finish for Mercedes. Nevertheless, in the ground effect era of Formula One, Mercedes has predominantly grappled with regaining their former supremacy. The setbacks of 2022 have spilled into 2023, with Mercedes failing to facilitate a serious title challenge for either Hamilton or Russell, and there have been instances during this challenging period when Hamilton has seemed overwhelmed by the persistent hurdles. Nonetheless, every opportunity for success reignites Hamilton's potential, as his performance at the Hungary Grand Prix illustrated, confirming he's still capable of remarkable achievements. Should Hamilton choose to extend his contract with Mercedes beyond F1 2023, it will fall to Mercedes once again to channel Hamilton's sporadic brilliance into a potent catalyst to propel him back into the title contention. Do you think Mercedes can sort their stuff out during the summer break? Let us know in the comments below, and we will see you in the next video!